Hi, it's Kerner Tex here again with the second in my series of videos about duplicating Linux. So on the first video I showed you how to duplicate um, a Linux from scratch image from one disk on the, uh, a machine to another blank disk on the same machine. Uh, in this video I'm going to demonstrate how to copy uh, the Linux from scratch image, or sorry, disk from one machine to an empty disk on a remote machine. So what I'll do is first of all I'll show you again the settings that I've got for the machines. So the source machine, the, the main machine that's currently got Linux from scratch on it, it's got the disk with the Linux from scratch on and it's got the uh, an optical disk with again the Gen 2 live DVD. Um, for the reasons as before, we can't boot from um, or have a working um, system that we're going to copy from. So we boot from the live DVD to allow us to copy from the image that's not, not in use. And then on the remote machine, I've got a brand new disk and um, again a live DVD image in the optical drive. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to boot this machine first, but you can see that the disk has got the first um, priority, is the first port, and that will be the one that will be booted. But because it's blank, um, you'll notice that the live DVD will boot instead. Um, so you'll see that when the image has been copied, will boot again, and because the image now exists on the disk, that will be booted instead of the live DVD. So I'm going to kick the um, or boot the second machine off, and you can see it's booted straight into the live DVD. So again, once as before, I'm going to type in Nox for no X session, and just set the key map to UK to make sure my keyboard works properly. And the first thing I'll need to do when this is booted is to make a note of the IP address because I need to know where to send the disk image to. Okay, so we've got a prompt, so let's do if config, and you can see just here this is the IP address because DHCP has worked um, has been the default it's picked out um, or it's been given a an IP address so I'm just going to make a note of that because it's DHCP it could change every time I boot and now I'm going to do fdisk-l to show the one and only hard disk on this system don't worry about these ones these are all because of the live DVD but this is the hard disk and you see it's got no uh, partition table and again if you like in the previous video I did an OD just to prove that it's empty I'll do the same again just to show that it's full of zeros on every sector Okay, so that's totally empty. So the next thing we need to do is to start um, an SSH daemon running so that we can actually um, connect into this machine from our source machine. So to start that off, do etc full slash etc full slash init d sshd start. So that just starts the SSH daemon off. Okay, that's that's running, and then we need to set a password because at the moment the password for root is unknown. So we need to set a password that we can use to uh, connect into this machine. So that machine's ready and waiting. I'm going to minimise that now, just out of the way, 
and I'm now going to boot the while that one's running I'm going to boot the source machine but because this one's got a hard disk in it with the Linux from scratch system on it it's going to boot from that instead so what I'm going to do is press F12 to boot from the optical disk when when this starts off so there's the message press F12 and I'm going to press C to boot the CD-ROM and once again I'll select the AMD64 image press tab type in NOX key map equals UK and wait for that to boot okay so there's a the prompt so if I do F disk minus L you can see once again we've got one disk but you can see it's got partition information there's there's data on this disk now if you consider what we're going to do here we're going to be transmitting a whole disk over the network uh, now while this might not be so much of a problem if it's on a local network if you're transmitting this over the internet then you want to transmit as little information as possible um, so the obvious choice to do that would be to do compression on, on the disk image um, and there's something else we can do to um, help uh, reduce the size of the image that we're going to transmit and that's to zero all the unused sectors so if you imagine the disk has had files created and deleted and files created and deleted and modified and so on when files are deleted they're only actually marked as deleted in, in a, like an index um, the data is left on a disk normally so what we're going to do is we're going to use DD to write a file that's just full of zeros and that means that when we come to compress the image of the disk and, and transmit it all those zeros basically get compressed extremely well rather than effectively compressing data that's not really required or not, not, not needed because it has been um, marked as deleted so to do that what we need to do is we need to mount the um, data partition so I'm going to mount dev sta2 onto the mount directory mnt directory I'm now going to cd into that directory and let me just do a list to show you there's the root partition or the root directory of our Linux from scratch um, that we created, well, that I created in my, my Linux from scratch videos. So, as I say, we're going to use dd to wipe the space and we do an in, input file and there's a special device called zero which its only job in life is to send zeros out. So every time you read from this special device, it's another kernel virtual device um, it just gives us zeros and that's all it does and we're going to write that to a file and we can call it something like zeros and again we'll do block size of 512 because that's the default sector size and we can just do status equals progress to watch the uh, Oops, misspell status to see how how it's going along. You can increase the block size again as we did in the previous video. Um, because this is backed by a, an SSD, it doesn't really that make that much of a difference to the rate. And as you can see, there's only two gigs to um, wipe out anyway. So that's. Um, created that and you can see that we've actually filled up the disk which is what we wanted to do no, no space left on device and we can verify that that file is full of zeros by viewing it with OD and as with the empty disk you can see it's not producing any other output so you can see that file is in fact full of zeros so the next thing I want to do is remove that because we don't want to leave it there there's no room 
Um, we'll probably have problems booting. So now that's that has wiped effectively all the free space on the disk without destroying anything else that's important. Um, and if you've got other partitions, you'd want to do that for every single partition, ideally, to, to reduce the transmission time and size of, of the um, disk when we, when we transfer it. So let's go back up one and unmount that now. Um, if you've got a large swap partition, so our partition is one gigabyte, which is a fairly reasonable size. You may want to do the same thing to that as well. But as it's not a file system, it's only a swap partition, you'll want to do DD in a slightly different way. And you'll want to do it with the output file as the partition device name. So in this case, we slash dev slash SDA1. So the thing we've got to do when we've transferred the partition, uh, sorry, when we've transferred the disk, is not only have we got to remember to modify the host name and the host file and the um, network IP address, we'll have to remember to recreate the um, swap signature on the swap partition, otherwise we're going to get an error when we boot. So that's wiped that um, block device because it's a block device there's no file to delete that's all we need to do so we've effectively saved ourselves three gigabytes that's one gigabyte of the swap partition and there was about 2.2 gigabytes on the data partition so we've got you know five eighths of the data to transmit add in that we're going to compress this and you know the size of the transmit could be you know less than half of that it could be something like two or three gigabytes so that's a, a lot of saving so now we need to we're in a position to copy the disk so we do this again with DD and the input file is going to be the device that we're transmitting which is the SDA disk and we're going to compress it with gzip and we use this command gzip with a dash which means it's taking input through the pipe and we're going to send the output so basically it's saying dd the in file, input file is coming from the uh, block device which is the disk the output of that gets piped into gzip gzip does its compressing and it pipes its stuff out we're going to send that to the SSH command and we're going to connect to the remote machine which was on IP address 78 and when we've connected to that we want to do a command gzip to decompress this so it's minus D and we want to send that output to standard out and the output from that goes to DD and DD sends the information it receives and writes it to dev SDA so this is dev SDA on the remote machine this command here will run on the remote machine which is a feature of SSH so it's basically saying connect to this machine when we've connected run this command and it will receive the data that this part is sending from the local machine and when it receives that data it unzip what is it it's zipped up here and then write the data that it's it's uncompressing um, and if we like we can put in a status progress here so we can see how it's doing In case I've never connected before, it says you better check that that's the fingerprint of the remote machine. Well, 
I know it is because I've just taken the IP address and it's a local machine so I trust it and it wants the password so it's the password that we set before and we'll just wait for that to a few minutes for that to copy you can see it's a lot slower mainly because we're compressing but the time um, is there's two parts this is the speed of the network interfaces there's the fact we're on virtual machines um, if we did do it without the gzip it would, it would take a lot longer because there would be more data to transfer um, as I say that once the data has been compressed it's only about two three gigabytes um, so compare that with transferring a whole eight gigabytes it's 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 going to be a lot faster even though it seems slower at that rate so we'll just wait for that to finish
Okay, so that is copied. And the reason why we've got two sets of output series, I think it's because one's to do with DD and the other one's to do with uh, GZIP. Um, and in case you're wondering, we've zipped this up, but it's still reporting eight gigabytes of data that's been copied. Um, the reason is the progress was showing the input, which is, of course, the whole disk, the output from GZIP would show the actual size of the data that's been transmitted and um, you know there's nothing set there to to display that um, in my next video where I show how to create an image you'll be able to see that it indeed um, does compress down quite well um, well that, that could also be another reason thinking about it why this is so low it's it's based in the um, uh, transfer speed based on what's being um, transmitted as compressed compared to the actual real size that so could be why that's low as well so that's um, completed now um, if I now switch to the clone it's got the screensaver on let's wake that up Right, so now if I do fdisk minus L, you can see we've now got uh, some partition information and we could even do um, another uh, E2FSCK just to prove that the data has indeed been transferred correctly. And yeah, it says it's clean. So one thing we need to do before we do anything else to recreate the swap signature uh, for SDA, if we do a quick OD on dev SDA1, which is the swap partition, you can see it's blank, which is what we transmitted because we wiped it out previously. Oh, there you go. That's quick. So let's recreate the swap on dev SDA1. Okay, so that's done. Um, obviously, if you're mounting the swap using the UUIDs, you're going to have to update the etc fs tab file to reflect the fact that um, the swap's got a different universal ID now. So that's something to bear in mind if you do decide to wipe the um, the swap partition out. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to shut down this machine. And this has come back up with the source machine, so I'm going to shut down this one now as well. And then I'm going to go into the settings of the target machine, go to storage, and I'm just going to get rid of the optical disk that's in the drive, just so that it won't boot from that, and just now boot the machine and there you go there's the grub menu it's been copied successfully and it's booted without any errors as well so that's good so we can go in there again and I say as before you need to modify the um, host name the hosts file and the IP address in the network configuration so that's all there is for this video. Um, I'll be doing a combination of the first video and this video in the third and next video um, because I'll be using or creating a, an image of the disk and then using that to create both the local and remote images. So thank you very much for watching and I'll see you on the next video. Goodbye.